the apostolate of the laity, living the Beatitudes one day at a time. The two branches of the grapevine. Nowadays, we can witness with our own eyes the existence of two branches of Christianity, a big branch in danger of drying up that constitutes the purgative itinerant and pilgrim church that has lost its contact with the Holy Spirit due to having too many earth power driven interests and material attachments and that unfortunately has been infiltrated and crippled by the evil one becoming this way more and more secular and a small green and alive branch that we can define as a triumphant church on this earth realized sanctified and redeemed by Jesus that exists through the holiness of its members and where the Holy Spirit resides and illuminates their actions in this world driven by an important number of genuine followers of Christ that we can call the apostles of the laity. Throughout our history and after Jesus Christ came to this world to redeem humanity and gave us his truth so we can act toward our individual reparation and salvation, we have seen examples of sanctified individuals that do not belong to the hierarchy of the Catholic Church or even that do not belong to it at all that have performed very important services to this triumphant branch of the church where Jesus and the Holy Spirit are present and this due to their own individual holiness as apostles of the lay Catholics that have genuinely followed Jesus Christ. I can think of three examples of this work for the sanctification of our world. A contemporary one that took place in the 20th century in India, another that took place in the 12th century in Italy, and one more that took place in Mexico in the 15th century. In India, an Albanian Catholic nun, while traveling by train to Darjeeling in the lower Himalayas, heard the call of Jesus to dedicate her life to helping the poorest among the poor. And as a result, only with a permission granted from her church, but with minimal resources and no income, founded the Missionaries of Charity to freely help the destitute, the sick, the lepers, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, and those dying in the streets in the cities of India that were forgotten by her own church as the actual suffering face of Christ. Davalos 2022. In Italy, the son of a rich merchant that was living a high spirit and carefree life, typical of a wealthy youth, experienced a strong conversion losing interest in his worldly life to such a degree that it took him to imitate the life of Jesus by living a life of poverty, itinerant preaching and service to others after Jesus asked him to repair his church that was falling into ruins. Francis and the young noble woman Claire of Assisi, his twin soul, managed to live their lives imitating Jesus' life and living his gospel to a degree unparalleled by any other human being or even saint in the Christian tradition. 
Davalus 2019. So the son of a rich merchant and a noble woman from Assisi, both acting as medieval apostles of the laity, managed to rebuild the decadent church of their times. In Mexico, an indigenous Chichimec peasant, Juan Diego Cuartla Toatzin, a rare advanced soul, was granted in 1531 four apparitions from the Virgin Mary Mother of Jesus Christ in the hills of Tepeyac, Tenochtitlan, now the outskirts of Mexico City. The veneration of the Virgin Mary by the whole Aztec nation that took place after her apparitions to Juan Diego was due to the successful completion of the assignment she entrusted to Juan Diego to go and ask Bishop Fray Juan de Sumarraga and to request in her name that a shrine be built at Tepeyac where she promised to pour out her grace upon those who invoked her. Its miraculous appearance in this consecrated territory as of 1531 made possible what the Spanish friars did not manage to obtain, the conversion of millions of inhabitants of all the ethnic groups belonging to the valley of the Anáhuac and of all the corners of the Aztec Empire. The final result of this saga was the construction of the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which guards our Mother Mary miraculous image and that is now the most visited Catholic shrine in the world. According to a 2019 Vatican Council report, with an annual visitation as high as 20 million. Vatican.ba Juan Diego was a lay Catholic, poor in spirit, and was also the central protagonist of the Guadalupian phenomenon that continues to this day. The Beatitudes, a kingdom organized from the bottom up. The messages found in the Beatitudes describe the foundation of the Christian faith. The purpose of the Beatitudes is to inspire us to live according to the traits Jesus describes. They all form the cornerstone of the ideal Christian lifestyle. Serrani 2021 The Beatitudes point to the increasing fulfillment in this world of the promise of the human condition as such and of the struggle against vast and daunting but not unsurmountable obstacles that such fulfillment would require. Jesus says that as long as ordinary people stand for the right things and do not retreat in their righteousness before those who seem to have more power, what's right will prevail. It's their kingdom a kingdom organized not from the top down, but from the bottom up, as an apostolate of the laity. In the Beatitudes, Jesus offers a description of the community of goodwill his teaching will build in this world. Lindbergh 20, 07, 2007. David Pathfield in 2010 in his book The Beatitudes, The Path to a New Life, asserted that one of the greatest problems in many local congregations today is superficiality and that the remedy for this superficiality is found in the Beatitudes. The Sermon of the Mount is probably the best known but least understood and least followed of all the teachings of Jesus, page 4. Now, who's going to enact this radical change in our entire lives for us and within our own self? The congregation? 
the congregation? No, this is a personal change that only belongs to our will to change our behavior, our lifestyle and worldview in our own existence. It is a personal atonement. And where are these beatitudes or qualities of life going to have a field to be manifested in a book, in our minds, in the future, in a particular event, with a particular person or group? No, only in our own lives, in the present, on a daily basis, moment by moment, situation after situation, in our interpersonal relationships with the fallen world in which we are immersed. Davalos 2022 Our Daily Blessings How to humbly submit ourselves to the will of God in our daily interactions? How to manifest the Beatitudes while we carry on with our day in this world, in our work, in our homes, in solitude? We do not have to manifest anything out of our own volition because the need to do it will present itself to us at every turn in our daily activities and what is important is how we will react before before the situations we're living in a society and living in a society always puts to a test certain flaws and weaknesses of our particular personalities. Only a positive change in our human condition will allow us to live and manifest the eight Beatitudes on a daily basis. Let's see. Poor in spirit. Are we humble? Then if we are, we won't let our tempers flare cursing other motorists in our daily driving to work, for instance, meaning that we have emptied ourselves of all desire to exercise personal self-will, leaving beside this game of a competitive and selfish world we all play, and walking instead to attain the kingdom of God as a blessing. Mourning. We do not mourn over our sins because we are not poor in spirit. And as long as this quality of character is missing in our lives, we will not be able to offer an apology to a co-worker that we unjustly mistreated at the office. And we will not be comforted in our consciousness from our unavoidable feeling of guilt for our actions. Meek. Meekness is strongly related to conforming oneself rigorously to the will of God. Through love and surrender in ourselves and through our actions and interrelationships with others, we can allow the Holy Spirit to grow within ourselves, little by little, step by step. In this way, we will be able to joyfully inherit the new earth promised by the Apostle John in Revelation 21, Davalus 2018. Hungering and thirsting for righteousness. At the end of the day, our quest for righteousness comes down from our inner world and from the constant fight for righteousness we have within ourselves from our constant struggle 24-7 between good and evil within ourselves. And this struggle is certainly reproduced and magnified in our external world. We need to restore our friendship with God first and then we will be satisfied. Davalos 2018 Merciful the Christ in your brother is calling out for help to you, 
So be merciful. This way, you will surely receive the same merciful helping your own hour of need from those who are farther along the path than you are. Fox 1989, page 36. Pure in heart. To become pure in heart is a progressive cleaning process that involves victory over conscious sin of every kind to achieve the mind of Christ, and then we shall see God. Peacemaker. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to the Romans states that until ongoing conversion dissolves the antagonism and peace is truly established in a person's character, we cannot truly be instruments of God. Peace. CGG.org As we can see, peacemaking qualifies as a characteristic each son of God will exhibit, and being this the case, they in all justice shall be called sons of God. Persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Jesus warned his disciples about this persecution in Matthew 10:17 to 18. But beware of men, he said. For they will deliver you up to the consuls, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. King James Version When a person opposes himself first, he persecutes himself, the old man. A person himself should persecute his own passions. If we enjoy an absence of persecution, maybe because we're fitting it too well with the world. And here it begs the question, are we being persecuted for righteousness sake? If we are, we should be happy because ours is the kingdom of God. Our great big hope, the apostolate of the laity. This is our Christian hope for all the apostles, Catholic laymen and women fighting in the trenches of every day to manifest the Beatitudes, to make this world a better one and to prepare the way for the return to Christ. I can see no hope elsewhere because salvation is a personal journey and nobody can do it for us. We can only teach others the path to Jesus through our own example, through our own redemption. Given that, unfortunately, the fruits of the Spirit have dried in many religious institutions that have been infiltrated by the evil one. Accordingly, the spreading of the kingdom of Christ is taking place one day at a time by the apostles of the laity, eager to learn about the truth and through their relentless and heroic holiness are living the blessings of Jesus Christ and contributing to the sanctification of our world in many congregations that are part of the small, green and alive branch that we can define as a triumphant church on this earth. They are certainly introducing us to the alive Christ, given that, as J. Douglas Byers in 2018 asserted, the lives filled with the Holy Spirit of people are the only factors that can be used in the hand of God to produce apostolic results in these dangerous days in which we live page 5 to 2. God has placed the laity on the front lines of the church where the battle is fiercest. There, lay men and women become saints by living holy lives deep in the secular world. There, 
As society's insiders, the laity gives powerful and subversive witness to Christ, living in the bread of culture with fiery gospel truth. It is the role of the lay secular apostle to mold that abundant gospel living into the Tao of marriage and family, business and politics, medicine and the arts, education and the military, and into every facet of secular life. May our joy stem from the satisfaction of following the will of our Father in heaven toward our sanctification and the sanctification of the world that has accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, while we prepare His coming with the light of the Holy Spirit and the protection of the mantle of the Virgin Mary, our Mother, and the Mother of the Christ, with my best wishes.